You are listening to Episode 40 of the Less Stress, More Fun Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the power of neutral thinking. You are listening to the Less Stress, More Fun Podcast. I'm your host, Certified Coach Lisa Schwaller. Each week, we talk about how you can rise above the stress of modern living so that you can focus your energy on what matters most. All right, let's get started. Well, hello, hello. How are you doing today? Today's topic is an important one, I think. It's a powerful strategy for handling stress. And quite honestly, it can actually introduce an element of fun into your life. Your mind produces thousands of thoughts every single day. And believe it or not, each thought is entirely neutral until or unless you have another thought about it. As a coach, I really love the strategy of shifting into neutral, especially because in my practice, it's a very, very effective way to reduce stress and ground you in what you can control. Today, I'm going to talk about how to define negative, positive, and neutral thinking, how neutral thinking serves you in a powerful, perhaps surprising way, and I'll provide suggestions for getting into a neutral headspace. But let's start with talking about the definition of these different types of thoughts. Thoughts are thoughts, but what makes a thought positive or negative? It's all a matter of storytelling, really. You believe certain things to be true or positive or negative, depending on how you grew up and the experiences that you've had, the influences that you've been exposed to, and perhaps even your natural tendencies or strengths. For example, do you think that listening to podcasts is a good thing or a bad thing? A lot of people love podcasts and they say they learn a lot of things. It's an easy way to learn on the go. But some people think podcasts are a total waste of time and that there's too many of them. But really, it's all a matter of perspective. We can describe podcasts in totally neutral terms. It's simply words that are recorded for people to download and play anytime. The value judgment of whether it's a positive or a negative thing is applied by an individual's mind, their thinking. And this is really what makes political conversations fascinating for me. There are people who have very strong opinions that this way is better than that way. And still other people who can see both sides or, frankly, not even care at all. How can this be if there is a truly a right or a wrong answer? I have the opportunity to work with so many incredibly intelligent and very conscientious people, and they hold a variety of opinions. In fact, people even with, you know, all the, like training or living in the same place, they can have opinions on politics that vary widely. And their viewpoints on either side seem very logical when we converse about it. They have a story in their mind that really makes sense to them, and they decide that their point of view is positive or negative. In that way, a difference of opinion doesn't clarify what's negative or positive. Let's try to establish a general definition. We could say that negative thinking is thinking that harms a person, it's critical, or thinking that tells the story of the past, present, or future in a gloomy light. On the other hand, positive thinking is usually described as thoughtful, hopeful, or optimistic. And I know many people who would be labeled as negative thinkers, but they're very satisfied with their lives and they create the results and the relationships that they want. And I know many people who would be labeled as positive thinkers, and yet they're not creating the results they want with their time and other resources. So many people assume positive thinking leads to positive results, but the terms positive and negative are inherently subjective, 
and quite honestly, both can be harmful and helpful depending on the interpretation. So what gives? This is where I think negative thinking can serve you in a powerful way. I've come to believe that neutral thinking can often be very helpful thinking, especially in times of unwanted stress. Learning the skill of shifting into negative thinking serves most of the people I work with in very powerful and sometimes surprising ways. Because at the end of the day, it genuinely doesn't matter whether you label your thinking positive or negative, and it matters even less what other people think of your thinking. What really matters, at least from my perspective as your coach, is whether you are satisfied with the living of your life. Are you spending your time intentionally? Are you saying yes to things you want to say yes to? And no to things that are a no for you. Your thinking could be rainbows, puppies, and butterflies, and yet your life could be deeply unsatisfying to you. Or you could be angry at the world, but like your life. <laughs> I say this because the truth is that no one gets to live your life but you. I've had some clients who, true story, find the thoughts and feelings of anger to be an amazing asset for them. Now, as a side note, this doesn't mean acting out of anger or in a way that causes actual harm to themselves or others. Today, I'm talking about how the landscape of your thinking and feeling, the inside job of your experience, can drive actions that you find satisfying, no matter what people might label them. In fact, I think the labeling of thoughts as negative or positive can often be very harmful in and of itself. I'll give some examples of this. I've had clients say, I have to shift this thinking, it's negative. It gives their automatic thinking so much power, too much power. We explore why it's uncomfortable for them. I'll ask them, so negative thinking runs through your head once in a while, big deal. It probably means you're a human mammal, but now what? For people who live with depression, anxiety, trauma, or another mental health condition, resisting and avoiding, you know, negative thinking, like if they're labeling it and then resisting and avoiding it, can actually amplify the feelings of sadness, anxiety, and fear. This was exactly my experience. I was taught via traditional psychological methods to pathologize or villainize my trauma thoughts. There was such an encouragement to stop that thinking, to root it out, to replace it. But my dramatic healing happened when I learned to look at my trauma-created thinking patterns with a neutral perspective. Those patterns still come up. There are things that will activate those bundles of neurons to hop into my mind but now I'm like, oh, that's just, that's that thinking there. I can see it very neutrally, and I don't label it as a problem or negative or something I have to get out. And then on the other side of the spectrum, I have clients who create a great deal of pressure for themselves by feeling that they and the people in their lives expect them to be positive. Gross. <laughs> a forced expectation to be positive? I mean, that equation seems like it would cancel itself out, honestly. I do think there is a difference between cultivating an expansive, future-focused growth mindset and an expectation or pressure to shift into positive thinking whenever we're uncomfortable. I totally relate to this. I often felt so much pressure to get my head right and to think positively and to you know, I mean, I tried to cram affirmations into my mind and it actually seemed to make everything worse because then it was just, it was like, oh, there's something else I'm not doing right. I'm not able to instantly reprogram my mind. A lot of this work comes through working with a lot of people, like working with myself and then hundreds of other people and experimenting with what happens with these negative and positive thinkings. When I'm working with people, and they're auditing and labeling their thoughts, or they're not getting the results that they want. For example, maybe they're thinking as positive, but they're just not creating the results that they want. 
we often use those as indications to shift into neutral. Neutral thinking often sounds like simply narrating your life events. Okay, neutral is numbers. Neutral is actions that occurred and words and exchanged. It's very emotionally low frequency. Like there's just not a lot of um, either high highs or low lows with it. Here's a, a beautiful example. If I was working with someone who's like, oh, I shouldn't be so negative about work, and they're worried about their negative thinking, we talk about the facts of what happened. This is an example. My client went to work on Tuesday. They attended a meeting. The customer told them the software breaks all the time, and they're tired of paying to have it fixed. These are words, facts, and events. My client doesn't need to switch to positive thinking. Everything works out. It will be okay. I did my best. Butterflies and sunshine. La, la, la. In fact, doing that can actually be counterproductive. I mean, it's almost like that, that image of an ostrich putting their head under the sand. In this particular instance, this is a real example, we practice the, the skill of regulating their emotions, handling conflict differently, and being more effective. And that was one of the things that um, they had hired me to help them do. Shifting over to positive thinking, everything will be okay, wasn't getting them the results they wanted. But getting to neutral and deciding what to do from there was such an effective strategy. I use it over and over and over to help people unlock their best selves. In this example, the conversation evolved from self-judgment and irritation at the complaining customer to using a neutral thinking formula. And it sounded like this. Yes, that happened on Tuesday. I get to decide what to think about the experience and I get to decide in advance how I will handle myself next time. Neutral. We looked at the story. We said, okay, on Tuesday, the customer reported a concern. I felt uncomfortable in the meeting. I reacted in my body with defensiveness, which caused me to get quiet in the meeting. And I think the customer is right that we don't test well before we release our code. So next time, if I'm in a conversation like that where a customer is complaining and I'm feeling defensive because I'm feeling angry at our testing team, when I notice that defensiveness come up, I will breathe deeply three times. I will notice that defensiveness has arrived in my body and at the same time, I can decide what I want to say in the meeting. I will practice not avoiding this feeling by going silent. It's perfectly okay to tell the customer that I need time to research and come back later with a proposal. And I think maybe over time, I'm going to, um, if I keep practicing this, letting that defensive feeling coming up, but then taking deep breaths, and taking the time I need, I'm probably going to be able to look forward to actually being able to train myself to respond with curiosity in meetings in the future. That was a long example, but see how that wasn't positive thinking? It was very neutral, and it was very results-oriented, very, very powerful. And as a side note, my client and I were able to use this experience to explore why defensiveness came up. And that allowed us to go in really deep and work together on their relationship with themselves. And I am excited because she's gotten so good at showing up with curiosity. And it really gives her customers a receptive sounding board now. And now her boss considers her a trusted resource for customer escalations. Isn't that great? Even better than that, she was able to calmly address the quality control issues with a more neutral approach. And now her team is experimenting with process improvements. Imagine that. It's so much more effective than saying, oh, I'm thinking negatively. I need to just shift to positive. When we went into neutral, we were able to see the situation more holistically with a results-oriented future focus, and it completely shifted my client's experience of being at work on difficult conversations, and she's becoming a more valuable asset in her organization. 
That's so much better than positive affirmations. Let me tell you, it's so exciting to watch that happen. And I see it happen over and over. But now let's turn this to you. I want to provide you suggestions for getting into a neutral headspace. You hang out with the Less Stress, More Fun podcast, which is very, it's a thinky place. We talk a lot about the thoughts that go through your head, thousands of them a day. And your brain likely has a habit of labeling some of them negative and some of them are positive. That's fine. It's nothing you need to change unless you decide it's a problem. I mean, after all, our thoughts are like weather. Sometimes the weather is sunny and sometimes it's rainy. And sometimes it's rainy and sunny at the same time. The weather is going to do what it's going to do no matter what you think about it. The same way that your thinking's going to do what it's going to do no matter what you think about it. The same applies, right? I shouldn't be so negative or I need to be positive. They're, that's just labels. And thinking about your thinking isn't always enough to connect you to the action that you want to take. So. How do you shift to neutral? First, pay attention to how you narrate or judge your thoughts. Notice whether that's generating stress for you. Is narrating, oh, I'm really thinking negative about this. I should think positively. Or, oh, they're a ne negative thinker. Is that actually a distraction from the main issue that maybe you'd like to work on? That can happen a lot more than you realize. Instead of labeling your thoughts or other people's thoughts is positive or negative, maybe you use that mental narrator. We all seem to have one or more. Have them go to work for you. Describe the situation that is happening as if you're talking to someone from outer space. And I'll use another example. This is an example of ways you can practice shifting into neutral. Right now, I'm in the car and my child is crying loudly. My jaw is tight with tension. My mind is thinking about how unfair this is and that my friend's baby never cries like this. And maybe she's a better mom than I am. Part of my mind is telling a story about my parenting. I feel sadness when my mind tells me this story, but I'm trying not to feel the sadness because I'm afraid I might start crying too. See how that's just explaining the story of what's happening? Like that mom is having an experience where there's a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings, but when she's able to tell it with neutrality, shifting into neutral and describing it in those terms, it gives a little bit of distance. In this example, there's a lot of humanity there as well. Today, we covered a lot of ground. We talked about... Um, thinking and how we would maybe define negative, positive thinking, how neutral thinking can serve you in a powerful way and maybe increase your results. Then I gave a couple of suggestions for getting into a neutral headspace. All right, it's time for Coach Lisa's homework. This week, notice if your mind labels your thinking as positive or negative, and if it does, whether there are judgments that come with that. Why? Then just practice neutral thinking. Practice telling the story that way. See if noticing the thinking or your body's experience and just describing what's happening with neutral terms. Uh, see if that creates a little bit of openness for saying, ah, oh, yes, this is what's happening. So now what do I want to do? What do I want to choose for myself? Negative thinking is not a bad thing. Positive thinking is not a good thing. Those are labels, and thinking is neutral until we label it. Noticing how your brain narrates your life is an amazing tool for deciding what to do on purpose. One thing I am positive about is that living from intention, whenever possible, is a great thing. When you show up on purpose, when you can see what's happening and then decide and show up on purpose, you are really going to start living the less stress, more fun life. Thanks for listening. 
If you're enjoying what you're learning, I'd love to have you as a member of the Less Stress, More Fun community on Facebook. Join me there to continue the conversation from the podcast. Plus, you'll get access to things I share only with community members. I'll talk to you next week.